Hello, everyone. Hi, guys. Welcome back. My name is Kayla. And I'm Kristen, your co-host. If this is your first time here, welcome. We've been seeing a lot of new listeners pop in on Instagram. So hey to everybody. Thank you guys for listening. What's popping? What's popping? What's going on? So a couple things before we get started. Don't forget about our December merch giveaway, okay? If you want to enter, all you have to do is write us a review on Apple Podcasts or Facebook and then take a screenshot of it and just like DM it to us or... Period. Email it, whatever. Instagram, mm-hmm. Twitter, Facebook, we have all that. Awesome. Okay, another thing. If you are in the Cincinnati, Ohio area or ever plan to be, make sure you check out our <laughs> licensed <laughs> massage therapist friend, Toria Savage. I'm sorry, girl, if I pronounced your name wrong. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, but either way, she listens to the show, so y'all will already have something to talk about and she can hook your body up she has period (laughs) she has discounts for first-time customers and from now until december 25th they are running a sale on gift certificates so check her out you can find her at massagebook.com slash essential oasis or you can dm her on instagram at diane bay so that's d-i-a-n-e-b-a-y so yeah i literally love that i might have to come to you and see what you're about as well girl we're coming okay whenever we're in where is it illinois cincinnati bitch (laughs) cincinnati ohio (laughs) where is that (laughs) ohio (laughs) got it so yeah hey toria girl hey girl now one more thing We have grown a lot and we're very, very grateful for you guys. And because of that, we're going to start working with brands more often. So you're going to hear some more ads. Okay. So we're not going to bring you anything that we don't think is popping or fire that we want you to try out. So listen to our ads that is supporting us anyway, if you listen and yeah, maybe buy some stuff if you fuck with it. Yeah. If you like it no pressure (laughs) only only if okay all right you guys ready kristen i'm like who is you guys is it me am i Kristen? oh my god let's get started before (laughs) kristen pisses me off (laughs) okay (laughs) so (laughs) for this case i didn't write an intro okay i just wanted to kind of get into it it was requested by listener Gioma M. So I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong too. Damn. I need to hit y'all up and ask about pronunciation before I get on this show and embarrass myself. Yes. So yes. I apologize. Okay. I'm going to work on that. Get the phonetics, sis. Yeah, girl. Yeah. Join us as we discuss the murder of 16 year old Sayana per year Tucker. Thank you to listener Gioma M for requesting this case. So I didn't want to write an intro because there's a lot that goes into this and i just wanted to give you the facts there has been no full resolution in this case it's still open and this is one of those cases that really need a lot of like publicity because it hasn't really gotten any it's gotten to the point where the victim's family have had to make a platform on tiktok and you know get into those type of things to even try to get her case like wow as much exposure as it deserves so we're here to help you sayana and her family and we're gonna talk oh about my gosh it. she was gorgeous oh stunning and at 16 years old we did not look girl like <laughs> at 16 <Ooh. laughs> we looked a bit of a mess <laughs> like, i'm pretty I sure might i have to post had- the picture the tummy that I had when I was like in eighth grade. Kristen, you tried it. You were cheering and you were active. Mm. So, mm. <laughs> well, then I had, uh, I had arms as big as a linebacker yes. and thighs that could break a watermelon, period. Uh, unapologetically, for sure. Well, I'll post a picture for everyone on Instagram. <laughs> so maybe you not. Maybe you were. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I didn't sign up for this. Maybe we're not ready yet. <laughs> I'm gonna give me some time you just posted our baby pictures give me some time I'm gonna do it okay so Sayana Linda M per year Tucker 
was born on March 13th, 2004. Holy moly. She was a baby. She was a baby. So, yeah. Kristen, what happened in Black history in 2004? Okay, guys. 2004, I was what? Eight. eight? I was eight years old, and this is what was going on. Picture this. On March 12th, 2004, Marcus Wesson, which is this like big, black, burly man, was Kristen, arrested. we covered his case. <laughs> <laughs> something told me, something told me that we covered his case. Like when I was looking at what this was about, I was like, I've heard this before. <laughs> Guys, uh, if you guys want to hear that episode, go check it out. Marcus Weston. I don't Marcus know which number Wesson, it is. Marcus Weston, y'all. Way back when. I don't even know if I was here for that. <laughs> to be <laughs> frank. To be it fair, It could have been an episode remember. I wasn't here for. <laughs> I don't remember. Okay. But basically, if you guys don't know, Marcus Weston was a big, black, burly man who was arrested in Fresno, California for murdering nine of his own family members. Yep. He raped and molested his own underage daughters and had children by them. And mm-hmm. on that day, he ended up murdering two of his own daughters and seven of the children that he had with them. Yep. So rest in peace to those babies, yep. all of them, the, yep. the daughters those and victims. the daughter's daughters, right. all of the victims, rest in peace to them. And Marcus Wesson was convicted and received the death penalty. Thank God. Period. Yes. And that was a that happened the day before she was born. Sayana was born. I know. Wow. wow. Crazy. So then from July 26th to July 29th of 2004, the Democratic National Convention in Boston, Massachusetts nominates John Kerry for U.S. president and John Edwards for vice president. Future mm. president Barack Obama delivers the keynote address on this day. Ew. <laughs> on November 2nd, on November 2nd of that same year, State Senator Barack Obama is elected to the U.S. State, the U.S. Senate to serve as an Illinois senator. Whoa. He becomes the fifth black senator in the U.S. history, only to become the first black U.S. president just four years later. I mean, like this man, this was man had a favor goal on his side or incredible Somebody's. corruption. <laughs> Either Somebody way. Was smiling on this man, doing things for this man. Within four years of him being in the Senate, he yeah. became president. That's crazy. Good for That's you, That's enough Barack. time for a campaign alone. So I know. Good job, President Obama. Good job. Our forever president. Well, Kristen, that's all I have for you. That was fantastic and really fun. So, thank you so much for that trip down history lane. Aw, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, (laughs) so let's be sad now. (laughs) Okay, so Sayana was, according to her family, incredible. And I can see that. She was really active on social media and stuff. So, I was able to look at her facebook and her instagram and she was i'm gonna be honest she seemed older than she was i mean period she she looks older than she was she seemed older than she was she may have been just one of those i'm mature for my age type of girls but you know she was listening to the same music like we listen to and stuff which i feel like a lot of kids are doing nowadays but you know she was just really cute really jovial and energetic and she loved to paint she loved to sing and dance her family and friends obviously she loved her baby daddy because she had a baby daddy and at only 16 she gave birth to her five-month-old daughter named melani melani so i think it's Mm. melanie type of thing but it's spelled m-a-e-l-a-n-i-e so okay and she was yeah, something like that. Well, it's a beautiful name, regardless if I'm pronouncing it, really it right or wrong. And she was born in late 2020. So around this time, Sayana was trying to figure out what she wanted to do with her life. I couldn't find if she was in school or not, but I know that she was trying to figure out if she wanted to pursue a career as like an artist or a career as like a nurse or even both. Mm. She mm. was considering doing both because she was just because you can that. do both, girl chick she was that chick Mm -hmm. 
I don't feel right calling like a 16 year old kid like that bitch. <laughs> I'm gonna say she was that chick, period. Yet yeah, on her tombstone, it says, truest in the motherfucking game. <laughs> <Period>. <laughs> i love that her family said they wanted to pick something that really embodied her her and you can tell i love it they said her personality was lively and she was the type of person that would poke fun at herself before you were ever able to like try to punk her or something like that you know Mm -hmm. she has some good captions on her pictures i can't even hold you or lie to you (laughs) one was like (laughs) One was like, if I let up, these bitches gonna think it's sweet. I was like, what? She said, if I let up, hoes gonna think it's sweet. Like, okay. You know, she's just giving me vibes. <laughs> like, she seems like a really cool little sister to have. And she yeah. had she had two older siblings that I was at least able to find. And they loved her. They were super, super close. And she was just a close-knit, like, family person. Wow. Even her and her baby daddy were on like really good terms. They had an amazing baby shower. They were still together when the baby came. He was there when the baby was born. You know, they were together until the moment, unfortunately, that she died. So it's really sad. And if you're on Patreon, it's really sad. Actually, I'm going to put this video out for the public to see because, like I said, we're trying to bring awareness to her case. So you guys are probably seeing this on YouTube or Patreon. And if you do the videos I'm posting and the pictures I'm posting, just make this so much more real and so much more sad. Period. And like, honestly, I'm looking at her with her baby daddy and they just (laughs) look like they're friends. Like, obviously they like like each other, whatever. But you could just look, you could see her and see like, yeah, she was down. Like she was a down girl. We could hang out with her, probably smoke a little something back in the day. Yeah, I was going to say she's a child. (laughs) Back in the day, if we were like, if we were same age, we would have hung out. 16 year old us was Sayana. Okay. Even though Sayana could be stubborn, this is what her mother said. I didn't say this. Um, She would always try to fix it after she'd upset someone. And if she was upset, she would let you know. It wouldn't be no type of guessing game with Sayana. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Her mother said that after a disagreement that they had, she found like an almond joy and an apology letter left by Sayana, which is something I never, ever thought to do for my mom. So she's already better than me. That is so cute. I, she literally sounds like a blend of me and you. Yeah. Because like, I definitely would have left a Snickers bar <laughs> and a no. Yeah. Or I would have just came back crying. And then you would have sure. been told a person how you felt the minute yeah. you felt it. Yeah. And I would never tell mom, give her the satisfaction of knowing that I was thinking about apologizing especially if she comes at me crazy because mom comes at us crazy sometimes okay anyway this isn't about us okay no kayla hush okay thank you so sayana and milani i'm just gonna call her may because i saw that a lot on her sister's page so sayana and may had moved from bremerton which is bremerton washington and lived with family friends in mckinney texas so shut up that's like right next door to me Oh, really? Yes. McKinney, wow. Texas is like 20 minutes from me. Wow. According to Sayana's mom, Texas held more opportunities than like the Bremerton area. And that's why she went down there. But being away from home and literally all her friends and her family, she really missed it. That's why she went back to Bremerton. And that's where she unfortunately lost her life. That's so, so sad. Yeah. So I mentioned earlier that Sayana's family feel like they have to do whatever they can to really get the news out about this case. And that includes going to social media platforms like TikTok. So Alani has a TikTok account that she has been using to get the word out and give updates about Sayana's case and everything. It's the handle is if you want to check it out at baby Laney zero. So that's B-A-B-Y and then L-A-I-N-E-Y zero. So check her out and according to her page according to the things that she's been posting this is what happened the day that Sayana died the evening of January 30th 2021 so guys this was literally 
around the corner. Yeah, like nine months, 10 months ago. Yeah. 11 months ago. <laughs> Math is not our friend. Okay. <laughs> the evening started with Sayana and May Snapchatting Eleni saying that they would be taking a nap and then they would come to her house after so they could go to their cousin's party together. So remember, stick with me. Sayana is our dearly past beloved and May is her daughter. All right. The last thing that Alani was able to say or Eleni was able to say to her sister was that she loved her and told May that she couldn't wait to see her. And then she said the next thing she knew, she was getting a call that Sayana had been attacked. Oh, my worst nightmare ever. Like, what? It's crazy like, how life changes in, like, the drop of a dime. It's just, oh, I got to chill. Ugh, like, it okay. sounds unreal. Kristen, it sounds disrespectful. It sounds evil. I'm going to be honest. It sounds like wickedness. Because it just yeah, like, shouldn't be that way. Right. It just shouldn't happen that fast. Yeah. <laughs> the Bremerton Police Department said the altercation started outside Luna's house. So Luna is the girl that we know stabbed and killed Sayana. Okay. Huh? Yeah. So I'm just going to tell you exactly what happened. And then we're going to take a couple steps back. Okay. So it happened outside of Luna's house where Sayana apparently showed up to fight. Now, there is a news, I guess, agency that wrote about this story. And according to Eleni, she said they were reporting things that weren't exactly true. So I'm going to tell you guys what the the article said. And I'm going to tell you what Eleni said, because I just want to give you guys what my research gave me. Right. Okay. Sayana showed up to Luna's house to fight. And according to court documents, Luna decided to grab her six to seven inch long folding knife and put it in her back pocket. So I I don't know why you take a knife to a fight. And but I, I, is it a knife fight? Like, is it that's a what knife I'm saying. fight? Did you think you were going to get your behind whooped? Like, why did you take a knife? <sighs> Well, Sayana threw the first punch, hitting Luna in the head. So I'm guessing so she Sayana, her you behind. know, she, got it. It, it could have been, but I'm not even going to give Luna that, to be fair. And we'll get to it. Luna later claimed that that's when she, quote, lost it and just started stabbing. Documents said after the fight, Luna went inside the house to tell her family, quote, I stabbed her. And she's just sitting there bleeding out? Like, what is going on? Right. So we're going to get to that. According to the news outlet, I don't really want to name them, but if you want to know who they are, you can see it in (laughs) the sources part that I have listed. So according to that news outlet, Sayana was conscious after the fight when her friends drove her to the former St. Michael Medical Center campus in Bremerton. So she had been driven there by friends. Okay. Yeah, there were people present when she was being stabbed. I mean, and did they do anything? I have no idea. I don't know because, well, we'll get to it. So she was eventually airlifted to Harborview Medical Center in Seattle, where she was declared um, deceased. At the time of the fight, Sayana's daughter was in the car with the friends. Yeah, who had taken her to, you know, the hospital. Yeah, Come May on. was there. So I'm going to read something that Sayana's sister Eleni wrote about what happened that day. More facts you should know about Sayana's case. We were told touch DNA takes three to six months to get back and we still haven't heard anything. So this was, I think she wrote this in early November, November 2021. On January 30th, 911 directed Sayana's friends to the St. Michael Medical Center, Bremerton. When they arrived, nobody was outside. One friend tried getting Sayana out of the car to take her inside when a cop pulled up and yelled to put Sayana back in the back seat. He began taking pictures of Sayana instead of helping her while she was bleeding out and losing her life. An ambulance arrived to take Sayana to Silverdale Hospital so she could be airlifted since Bremerton Hospital no longer had a trauma unit or a helipad, which is like a helicopter landing area. 
They began to put Sayana in the ambulance when a Bremerton doctor came out and brought Sayana into the Bremerton hospital saying he needed to prep Sayana, knowing they weren't equipped for that type of trauma. Sayana was at the Bremerton hospital for an hour, if not longer, losing what? Losing tons of blood. They finally transferred Sayana to get taken to Seattle, but Sayana never made it there. She died on her way. How infuriating is that? This is so a sixteen-year-old girl. This is a gross showing of how people don't communicate, and when people don't mm-hmm. communicate in dire circumstances, somebody can die, literally die. Yep. Yep. If you knew you couldn't house her there, why would you even take her inside? The ambulance could have prepped her while they were on the way to the other hospital. You ding dong. You imbecile. And then how did the cop all of a sudden just pull up? Like, were they tailing them? Like, did they know that this fight happened and they followed them there? And why was your first instinct to be like, oh, let me take pictures instead of helping her? So the pictures part, I have no clue i feel like the only reason why a competent cop would do that is if they already were sure that sayana had unfortunately passed if they feel like you know she's still alive and stuff why would he stop her from getting help i cannot tell you there's probably a bunch of reasons and one of them could be racism but hopefully not i think it's just full-blown stupidity and then you asked about why the cop showed up. So I think yeah. that while they were on the phone with the the 911 operator, the 911 operator dispatched a cop because when you know that like a stabbing or something has happened, they usually send an officer to mm-hmm. question people and stuff like that. What an idiot. You could have literally <sighs> took pictures after. Thank after you. After she was taken care of. Thank you. There are many witnesses to this murder. At least five people were there, including a cell phone camera that filmed the whole thing. That's the yes, generation indeed. we live in now. Mm-hmm. Lola's then boyfriend, Tommy, was the one filming. And according to the video footage, Luna held the knife behind her out of view of Sayana. So Sayana couldn't even see that Luna had the knife. She hid it behind like her thigh. Snitch. I mean, not a snitch. Snake bitch. ass bitch. <laughs> Oops. Well, let me tell you something about Luna. She's 16 too. So I don't even want to call her a bitch, but she's. She's caught up. She's she's, she's on the wrong side of it all. She thought yeah. she was cute. Yeah. She thought it was worth it. Baby mm-hmm. girl. Definitely not worth it. It's not. So in the video, you could see Sayana punch Luna in the head and then Luna stabbed Sayana in the face. Police records say that for about 45 seconds, the two exchanged blows and like grappled with Luna repeatedly striking Sayana with a pocket knife. So I saw that it was like one of those knives that fold down, kind of like a hunting knife and that Mm -hmm. comes out as long. And then I also saw, saw it was like a pocket knife with a three inch blade. So either way, it was a knife, guys. I don't know what kind. And Sayana is still fighting while she's getting stabbed Yep. Like nobody's helping. No, no. By the end of the attack, Sayana had been stabbed at least 25 times. Once in her chin and neck, 11 times in her stomach, two times in the face, three times in her arm and seven times in her back, clearly showing she was trying to get away. Yes. Bro. So this girl had time to stab her over 20 times and none of her friends helped her. Are you taking the piss? This is the only time I would be like, yes, jump that. Jump that hole. Because (laughs) she has a knife. Like, it's not a a knife anymore. Are you kidding me? Like, you can clearly see that there are not punches being thrown by this other person. And I'm sure that Sayana was making it known that she was in distress being stabbed the first blow was to her face Um, and i feel like the adrenaline may have been going with sayana you know because she's just like fight just fight 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 she's being attacked you know viciously with a doggone weapon oh i'm so glad they don't have that video out honestly because i I feel like i was gonna ask if you had it no 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 that's something that i'm really happy that i can't see 
So how many times Ayana was stabbed was something that the family wasn't told for months after her death. They were initially Mm -hmm. told that she was only stabbed five times. How do you shit the bed that much? I have no idea. But maybe they were trying to save them a little bit of heartbreak. But honestly, that's not the investigator's job. It's your job to be honest with the family about what happened to their daughter, you know? Right. It's already hard enough to know that something is going down with your loved one. You can't see them. You can't touch them. That's already hard enough. That already makes me want to score up to know that my, my loved one has been helicopter off to God knows what hospital. I have no way of knowing if she's okay. I am pissed Mm -hmm. and then you tell me lies on top of that yep okay so i'm going to jail now because Uh, now i'm fed up yeah no no, now i'm going to jail right like now it doesn't even matter what y'all do with whoever stabbed her i'm going to jail jail. (laughs) because i'm going to handle it yeah this is so frustrating extremely lola's stepdad and brother helped her clean up blood evidence And Lola went and hid the knife. So there are obviously accomplices involved in this situation. Those accomplices' names are Dwayne, which was her stepdad, her boyfriend Tommy, and then her brother Ty. And even worse, they try to get rid of the evidence, meaning the video evidence that Tommy took. They try to get Mm. rid of it. So I'm like, if that's not at the very least obstruction of justice, I don't know what the fuck is. Right, it absolutely is. Right. And various explanations gathered by investigators, remember there was a number of people there. So investigators had to interview everyone. They got different purports. They said Sayana had gone to Luna's house to like facilitate a fight, meaning Luna was supposed to fight somebody else, not even Sayana. Mm-hmm. And the person that Luna was supposed to fight is someone that she fought before. So I'm mm-hmm. thinking maybe it was one of Sayana's friends, right? Mm-hmm. Another witness said that Sayana had gone to Luna's house to confront her about some shit talking she was doing like on Facebook about Sayana's child. Ooh. Exactly. Don't do that. Exactly. You don't talk about my baby. You know, and her she baby was... baby. Exactly, exactly. So... I don't know why she would be running her mouth. And another weird thing was Sayana's mom, which I guess Sayana was very close to because she was confused. She'd never even heard of Luna before. And Sayana would have told her if she had like beef with beef. another, mm-hmm. yeah, another teen. So it was really weird. And then even in Luna's statement that she made to police, she said she didn't even know Sayana and she expected to have to fight somebody else. So you pull out a knife on a girl you don't even know. But right. you that like your beef isn't even with her, but you are coming for her like she stole your man, your money, right. your, everything that you know and love. It's the weirdest thing because I'm like, why would you if this is a chick you don't know, why would you say rude stuff about her on Facebook? Because I did see on like Twitter and other places that people were saying, oh, this all started from a Facebook beef. But I wasn't able to like really find any, you know, evidence of that. And even if like. Like how we had beef with such and such and her friends jumped in on the internet and we didn't even know who they were. We knew of them. But of course, we're going to talk mess about them because now they're trying to jump in. So it could have been a thing where like her friend was supposed to fight old girl. Mm -hmm. And then Sanaya was like, I guess, supporting her friend. So then, sorry, Sayana. (laughs) Sayana was supporting her friend and then got caught up in the mix. But this is a different type of caught up. This is extreme. This is way too far over nothing. These are kids, too. You know, like, these are kids. Come on. So Lola parents claim that they are going through a very tough time and are dealing with vandalism and stalking and threats for their daughter's actions. Well, (laughs) they said they've reached out to police and police are like, there's really nothing we can do about it type of thing. Like, they're not trying to help much they feel like we're being harassed by supporters of Sayana, and you guys aren't protecting us it's like well who was protecting Sayana from you guys because as we know her stepdad was there her stepdad mm-hmm. helped her 
hide evidence. So we're not going to mm-hmm. have sympathy for you guys. To be fair, all of you need to be arrested. Mm-hmm. And then they're trying to pull this like innocent until proven guilty thing. But it's I like, don't think so. Goodbye. You know, half of America is not with that. Like if there is no. any a sliver of something saying that you did something, they're coming for you. And <laughs> even the whole, even the government, the federal <laughs> government that said this is what's supposed to happen doesn't even do it no so and if they if they can't help sayana Mm -hmm. why would they help you like (laughs) if he had the nerve to sit there and take pictures of her while she was bleeding out and you expect the same force to help you guys it's not clearly incompetent in every which way so just sad luna's mother told an officer that quote Her daughter is being punished for what she did, but she also feels like the police are not holding others to any legal standard. And as a result, the behavior continues to escalate. Well, to be fair, the police isn't holding you guys to any legal standard for what you did in in cahoots, in accompliceness to Sayana's murder. So Mm -hmm. they're failing Mm -hmm. everyone. Stop complaining. At least you're still breathing. <laughs> At least your daughter is still around. Meanwhile, you know? your daughter took another girl's life. And it's like, I understand Sayana may have threw the first punch, but Sayana also didn't have a weapon behind her back. No, like, like just because people you get, fight, like get over it. If you get and your the, butt whooped, get over that too. But don't and bring the thing a weapon. Is there, was, there was complete evidence that Luna or Lola knew that she was going to have to be fighting. She knew it. So, Mm -hmm. and you prepare for this, like you premeditated this in a way, if you bring a a knife to a fight and you really expect me to think that you plan not to use it. And the first blow that you make is with the knife stabbing her. Come on, bro. Play with your mama. Don't play with me. Right. During the months that followed Sayana's death, police wrote nine reports about allegations of harassment at the residence on the 3000 block of Soli Avenue. So that's where Lola and her family were living. According to documents obtained by that news station that I'm not going to mention, one report was prompted by a neighbor so it wasn't even from the Luna family who said he was disturbed when observing a person walk by Luna's father who was working in the yard and say messed up comments about you know their child so wow i don't think that people should be chastised i don't really believe in that i don't think trying to make someone else feel guilty and stuff is ever gonna work that shit's just gonna happen if it's gonna happen what they need to be Mm -hmm. focused on is trying to find evidence you know to get them arrested i don't think berating someone is gonna work right it's basically bullying like yeah even if But it's like kind of not because a bully picks on people that didn't really do anything. Yeah. But I'm just saying like if even if a person is guilty of something, people who have nothing to do with the situation should be helping trying to get the case more notice instead of sitting there and bashing the people that were involved because it's not going to help anything. It's just an avenue for you to get your hate out because Mm -hmm. you really, you know, you really are pissed off about the world and everything that's going on. But it's like, no, you should be turning that into something that's actually helpful. Yeah, for sure. During another or at least talk ins- your shit online. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that part, because a lot of people are definitely doing that. During another incident in February, a Bremerton police sergeant wrote he saw a person who he believed to be under 21 years old intoxicated and trespassing on the Luna property. So the Luna is obviously, if you can't realize that, that's the last name of the family. At least that's what Lola goes by. She goes by Lola Luna. The sergeant never identified the person that they saw on the property. One of the officers wrote, quote, our goal is to document any criminal activity and seek to identify suspects when possible, end quote. So for me, I feel like the police really is dropping the ball because I feel like there's only a certain amount of people that would be 
brazen enough to go up to the Luna's house and do whatever they're doing. I feel like they could have at least put a squad car outside of the house if they gave a crap or even told the Lunas to buy a ring camera so you can see when someone's approaching your house and possibly be able to identify them that way. But Absolutely. like I said, it doesn't really seem like this police department knows its head from its ass. And then you're leaving the actual citizens who you claim to be protecting to defend themselves. And then yep. that can be another whole case. Absolutely. So, yeah. This is Absolutely. bad. Absolutely. Yep. Luna's father even attempted to obtain an anti-harassment order preventing contact from one of like Sayana's family members. Cause I guess one of them was really <laughs> coming hard. I just don't know which one it was. Um, and I'm not mad. But on April 30th of this year, the district court commissioner denied the request. And according to court records said, quote, he provided insufficient evidence of unlawful harassment. So basically tough titty deal with it. <laughs> like this Loved is the burden one. of what would happen if your daughter, mm-hmm. or anybody in your life takes another person's life. This is the consequence. Yep. Loved ones of Sayana have held demonstrations near the Luna property, but Sayana's mom emphasized that those are peaceful. They're more like silent vigils, basically saying like, you're not about to forget my daughter if I have anything to do with it, you know? Mm. And she even countered that the Luna family had been antagonizing them both on social media and in person with taunts and like using racial slurs against them. Mm. And if you guys, if you guys aren't watching this, Lola Luna is Hispanic, I believe. And her stepdad looks like he may be Hispanic or Caucasian. So just to give you like a little bit of a dynamic there. And then Sayana is, I think she's mixed. Yeah. Definitely think she's mixed with some type of black. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. According to Sayana's sister, Eleni, so I'm going to read another post that she posted because like i told you eleni's on it okay this is her sister like she's going to bat for her period it really just blows me how y'all work it took my baby sister being murdered for y'all to come forward with all the threats lola made to stab people her pulling knives out on people and her talking about how easy it is to get away with murder a teen goes missing and in quotations, kidnapped. And now everyone is coming forward about how these dudes who took him may have made other people disappear. Does it really take someone to lose their life or get kidnapped for y'all to finally speak up? And then she mm. writes more, but that's like the most important part of what she posted. And the guy that she's talking about that got kidnapped is 18-year-old Tyrone Cer- Ciro? Ciro? So he was a Caucasian kid, actually, that went missing on October 19th in the same area. Apparently, he told a friend that 19-year-old Gig Harbor contacted him on Snapchat asking to buy, like, weed. And Mm -hmm. after Tyrone met up with Gig, he will be reported missing the following day. Wow. So as of the recording of this episode, two people have been formally charged with first degree murder in Tyrone's case and police are looking into a third suspect. So just a little bit more background information on Tyrone's case. Unfortunately, one of the people that admitted to the murder said that they shot him in the head and then attempted to dispose of his body. And there were remains found in relation to his case. So rest in peace to Tyrone. That is, he didn't deserve that. I don't even know the kid and I don't really care. People can be shitty, but that doesn't mean they need to be shot. People can be crappy, but that doesn't mean they need to die. Like, right, right. Those right. type of just, people that deserve to die, they're a whole different caliber. I don't think they just run out here on the streets. They might be. Some of them. But some of them. I don't think it was Tyrone. So I don't think it was 18 year old Tyrone Zero. Definitely not. Right. Also, love that he's named Tyrone and he's <laughs> Caucasian. Love that. I love that. Okay. Anyway. I really do. <laughs> Had to say it. Okay. So, in the interview with police investigators, Luna was claiming self-defense. 
Kristen rolled her eyes, guys. Like, <laughs> you, you stabbed her 20-something times and you're claiming self-defense? Piss off. Right. And she would later plead not guilty when the prosecution wasn't with the shit and charged her with second-degree murder. Period. Not Lola manslaughter. Was pa- murder. Murder. Lola was passed down a $100,000 bail, which is crazy cheap because for second degree murder yeah Kristen looks like what well, <laughs> because for second degree <laughs> well no because you only have to pay like 10,000 of that like a 10% mm. of your mm. bail and it's usually like around $500,000 for you know charges so serious as this and I'm thinking like is it because they're underage Maybe it's because of her age, but what does that have to do with the access that her the family crime. has? Yeah. And also the access that her family has to money to get her out of jail. Like, hello. Mm. Usually you try to set a bail that's not too easily reached for a murderer. Prosecutor Chad Enright maintained $100,000 was appropriate at first, but after learning that Luna's family had actually sold their house... And that Luna was going to be living outside the county. Like they just planned to, because they didn't want all the heat on them. They planned to sell their place and move away. So being that that was what's going to happen, he was like, no, please judge. Raise it to $500,000. And Judge Batshit Bassett denied it. So yeah, the judge in this case is complete trash. I want to let you guys know that. He's trash. And I don't even know if it's What was he thinking? What was he or she thinking? Like, why did they deem 100000 was like, hmm, this is sufficient? All I can think is because of the age. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. And they're like, oh, she's she's 16. Like, how, she's not going to get out. Right. And she's 16. Like, And if she does get out, like, she needs access to her family, even if it be for a little while. I just can see them playing the age thing, having probably taking some type of pity on her. Definitely. Which is so annoying. It's not appropriate. <sighs> at all. Judge Batshit did, however, add an additional condition that Luna had to be fitted with an electronic home monitoring system. So basically, she had to be tracked wherever she went. They needed to know. And she also had a nine o'clock curfew as well. So saying that or being that they were already talking about what type of curfew she has, it's clear that the bitch is out. I'm sorry. It's clear that she's out of jail. Mm. can you imagine how cyanus family feels and they and they said they hated they said they hated the way that judge batshit was treating them because when they were at the hearing to try to get her bail increased because let me tell you before they even try to get her bail increased luna fuck lola tried to get her bail decreased Yes, there was a hearing for her bail to get decreased. And Sayana's brother and sister spoke at that trial or at that hearing. And she said that Batchet didn't even really listen to them at all. Eleni felt like he was just trying to basically hurry up with the decision, rush them off, didn't really care about their statements. So Luna's trial is now scheduled for sometime in January or February of 2022, But with criminal trials being backed up because of COVID, who knows if that schedule is going to stay the same since it's changed so much. She was originally supposed to have her trial back in August, but things kept changing. And according to Sayana's mom, each postponement just makes the grief even harder to really deal with. I'm sure. She said, quote, she said, quote, every little delay pushes us back to step one. It's just so sad. Uh, So sad. They said they still have monthly demonstrations for Sayana near the Luna's yard because they don't give a damn. And also because that's where she died, you know? Right. Also, I want to say that there was an Instagram post that Luna put up with a caption that said something along the lines of getting away with murder is so easy. I don't know how people get caught. They must just be lazy or something that's what she said and it was posted seven months before she killed sayana and this is the same girl that people are saying is pulling knives out on people and threatening to stab people and talking about how she wants to kill people and she's not being held on 
bond. And then on top of that, the accomplices are still out with no charges being pressed on them. I cannot even think about what they're possibly doing to say, oh, we don't have enough evidence. That is not the issue in this case. You can see all these people in the video. Even some of Sayana's friends should be held accountable. I'm not even going to hold you. Nobody tried to stop this. So how do we start punishing bystanders? You know, Mm -hmm. Sayana's family is even working to create like this movement of in teen violence. And they also want to get a law passed saying that if someone is there or recording or something like that, when someone's life is being taken, they should face just as much Duh, it's called Time in being prison. an accomplice. Yes. It's it's so crazy because I feel like as time goes on, being an accomplice only really is used by police when it's dealing with like black people gang crimes. Like they're like, oh, did he drive? Oh, he's getting, he's, mm. he's going in. You know what I'm saying? He's mm. going down with you. Oh, did he give you the gun but wasn't even there? Oh, he's going down with you. But in this situation- just so corny. Like, which is so because wrong. And now it should be, oh, they videotaped you getting stabbed and murdered. They're an accomplice. Like it, yes. it's, it needs to evolve as society is evolving. Social media the, can be a killer. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, it doesn't even have to involve, evolve that much. The law already states, if you are a part of a murder or a violent crime, you are an accomplice. So being there means that you are a part of it, you idiots. But mm-hmm. I, it's clearly that it's it's clear to me that this law enforcement agency is basura and cannot be trusted. And they really need to bring in somebody from the outside to get justice for Sayana. These people should yep. be in the jail. We shouldn't even be having this conversation at all. Yep. I agree wholeheartedly. And Luna is still out. And she was actually recently at the fair out with her Lola. friends dog on it lola luna <laughs> was out at the fair with her friends living her best life on bail for murder the least you guys can do you mean to tell me your daughter was a part of a murder and she's not grounded she's not in the house she's partying at a fair with her friends Are you taking the piss? Like, then it makes me feel like, okay, so when parents fail, then society has to basically clean up their mess. And we already know the justice system doesn't do a very good job of cleaning up messes. So it's just like, so who is going to hold who accountable? We don't know, Kristen. Society is going directly into the shitter. And I need to move to Norway. I'm going to the Netherlands, so we'll be... Close. We'll be out of here. <laughs> yeah. And that's our case this week, you guys. So if you want to support Sayana and her family and their journey to justice for her, please follow Justice for Sayana on Instagram. They have a Facebook page as well. Check out her sister's TikTok on there and just show them love. Share this episode as much as you can with as many people as you can because Sayana deserves to rest in peace and i don't think she'll be able to do this to do that until her killers are put behind bars i think for the sake of her family like yeah let's let's spread the news because they're clearly hurting even if cyana has found peace because she's gone Mm -hmm. the family's hurting the baby like doesn't have her mom anymore and possibly was there when her mom was murdered which is traumatizing and the baby Sayana only got to spend five months with her baby and was literally on the way to the hospital with her baby sitting next to her as she's bleeding out as she's bleeding out because none of Sayana's friends even wanted to sit in the back seat with her to help her stop bleeding out but you're it's just tragic it's tragic that's why I say watch who you (laughs) watch who you let close to you in your close vicinity six feet is a great, great thing to keep enforcing. And if y'all want to be out here thinking you're cute, fighting and all that extra stuff, then stay protected. And not in the sense of, oh, let me bring a pocket knife. But Mm -hmm. if your friends are with you, hold let your friends be there if something yeah. goes wrong or down let them have like hopefully the people you're with have your back yeah. so just bring people that have your back and we don't condone violence we're just saying that the violence that's happening now 
in high schools and stuff is just too much yeah yeah it could i feel like it's totally preventable too that's the thing it for really me. Is. it's and it's really because of this music that we keep listening to and all these rappers that talk about spraying a nigga you know every six and a half seconds and it's just mm-hmm. not good for our youth but that's nope. the conversation for another time rest we digress peace. Rest in peace, Diana, you beautiful, beautiful young girl. And shout out to her family. I really, really pray that this has helped spread the word about her case. And in any way we can, we will continue to. So, yeah, rest in peace. To all of our listeners, thank you guys so much for hanging out. And as always, be safe. Protect your peace, honey, and protect your space so we don't have to cover your case. Bye. Bye. You have a right to kill me. I have a right to do that. But you have no right to judge me.